Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to Sunday Morning Yoga with Rebel 11. My name is Natalia Dotto. I work with Joni Parsons and Monica Smith, the co-creators of Rebel 11. And we're thrilled that you can join us this morning and so glad that Jenna McDonald is with us and she is going to lead us through the next hour of yoga. Je Jenna is a studio owner with more than 1,000 hours of advanced training and she has been teaching yoga for well over a decade Thank you so much for being here Je this morning, Jenna. Oh. Take it away. Thank you so much. And welcome in to all those who are here. This is, uh, there we go, there you are, I see you now. That means a lot to me. <laughs> it's new for me not to be holding the space. So um, just, I, I love to take a candid moment before we drop in to the breath and the practice. And um, what I would love to share this Sunday morning. Um, it's just a little other part of me that I will bring to practice and I hope it encourages you um, to come here this morning, not out of the spirit of um, performance or perfection, but out of the spirit of presence and authenticity. So rather than making it vinyasa yoga or power yoga, it might just be in your mind today, um, authentic yoga. <laughs> how, do I, how do I play out my authentic yoga? So I'm so happy to be here. And um, the other part of me I wanna to bring to the practice today and share with you is that um, I'm also a mothering and, and gift culture scholar. And what I've learned in that field and practice is that we operate from a, a mentality of exchange, even on our yoga mat. So today I wanna to invite you not to be looking for like the highest rate of exchange from every posture <laughs> and every breath, but instead to be looking for the gifts of breath and also what you can gift to the practice. And just see if that changes your pattern of breathing. See if that changes your approach, you know, rather than um, working for the pose, right? We bring our work mentality here. <laughs> rather than working for your postures today? Can you let the pose work for you? Can you receive the gift of the movement? So let us begin on our mat in a possibly unique way for you. We're going to begin lying down in Shavasana and I'll walk you through it. So go ahead and meet me on the mat. And you'll start seat in the middle. <laughs> Anchor on back, <laughs> feet to the ground, and then you probably know this shape, legs extend. And your arms are gonna just kind of peel or roll out to the sides, the back of the skull on the earth. Let your eyes fall shut. And we can acknowledge together and honor together that it takes a moment, yeah, to arrive in virtual space. But let's do so consciously bringing our authenticity, our hearts and minds together. And we can notice that we choose how meaningful to make any one practice or gathering. So from this reclined space, I'd like you to pause, feel any bubblings of anxiety or anticipation of the class, just sort of fall down the back body and into the earth. And let the earth come up to hold you. Take a sweet breath in, fill your lungs, and then exhale all the air. And a few more times on your own, without struggle, just expanding your lungs and then releasing the air.
And for another 15 or 30 seconds here, I just want you to notice the quality of your presence this morning. And just kind of rate it for yourself, you know, on a scale of one to 10, like how are you coming energetically to the practice? 10 being totally nourished, (laughs) well-rested, feeling strong, you know, feeling in your body. And then of course, on the other end of the spectrum, like feeling exhausted or tired or sleepy or all the things that we don't like to name, like lazy (laughs) or unfocused. And just notice how you're coming. Notice what's authentic. And if you're like a four or five, then just bring 100% of that four or five to the space, to your practice, and let that be enough. Two more rounds of breath here. Training the body to touch its own impatience or stillness. And then flutter the eyes open, taking in your space. Bring the soles of your feet onto the ground to begin with and kind of tuck your tailbone, setting your seat back on the earth. I'd like you to bring your thumbs under your own seat and then knees toward the heart and extend your legs toward the sky. And it's okay if they're not perfect, right? Presence over perfection. I want you to take a nice thick inhale here. And then exhale, start to lower those heels just a few inches off the earth. And then inhale, knees to chest. Exhale, heels to sky. Inhale here. Exhale, lower heels almost to the earth. Inhale, knees to heart. Exhale, heels to sky. Inhale here. And exhale, heels almost to the ground. Inhale, knees to heart. One more exhale, heels to sky. Inhale here. Exhale, lowering the heels, using your hands as brake pads, almost to the floor. And then inhale, knees to heart. And this time, exhale your heels to the sky and pause. Toes are bright, spreading through the toes, right? Feeling a tiny inversion. And then gently bend your knees and land your heels close to your fingertips or your seat. Let the feet be a generous distance, so at least as wide as your hips. And then all you're going to do is tack your elbows into the floor, fingertips toward the sky, almost like you're holding a block. On your inhale, please root your arms and lift your hips. And then on an exhale, start to lower your seat and just barely let your seat kiss the ground. And again, inhale, rise the hips, pressing your feet down and forward into the mat. And then exhale, start to lower The seat will kiss the ground at the bottom, but barely touch. And again, inhale, lifting up through the hips. These repetitive motions help open the body and then exhale, slowly coming down, hips or seat to kiss the ground. This is our last lift, inhale, reaching the hips up for a tiny bridge or lift, and then just stay for a moment. Let your chin come slightly off your chest. Maybe feel your glutes sort of hot (laughs) or your um, hamstrings start to light up. And then begin to roll down the back consciously until finally the seat comes to the earth, 
Let your knees come in towards your heart. Take your hands under your own knees and gently draw the knees into the chest. So you have your hands under your knees and then we're going to gently rock up and down the back three times. So you have to use some momentum. Okay, starting to rock up and it's okay if it feels clunky in the beginning. Okay. Up and down the spine at your own pace. When you've taken it three times, come up and cross the legs. Roll over the knees, hands in front of the body. And then walk your knees back mid-mat. So you find your hands in knee position first time today. With your knees under your hips and your wrists just barely forward of your shoulders, notice where there's any locking out in the body and just start to micro bend the elbows. Soften the pelvis. Now let's inhale, lift the sit bones, lift the heart, look forward. And then exhale, curl the tailbone, navel in, low ribs and press the hands to earth. Again, inhale, lifting through the sit bones. The navel can tack in as you lift your heart forward in space. And then exhale, curling the tailbone, Low belly in, middle belly, press your hands. And last one, inhaling, lifting your sit bones, rolling through the spine, kind of peeling forward toward the heart. And then exhale, curling the tailbone, low belly in, ribs in, press your hands. And then gentle neutral spine. Make sure your knees are not too wide apart in this one. I like to bring them in an inch or two for stability and then step your right leg back in space. Lift the leg parallel to the ground and take the low navel in. Bring the left arm out in front, palm faces center line and inhale, create some space. Exhale, left elbow to right knee, crunch in as you press into the earth and then inhale, extend. Exhale, tuck in. Inhale, extend. Two more. Exhale, tuck in. Inhale, extend. Last one, tucking in, elbow to knee. As you root your right hand, inhale, extend. Whole body opens and then root your left palm. Take your right toes to the earth and open your left leg like a door or a kickstand. Spin your right heel down to the mat and come up high on your left fingertips, plenty of space. Bring your right arm to the sky and then plug down the left hand and reach your right arm up and over the body looking for a lateral side opening. Take a breath into that right side. Circle the arm back. Right hand to earth, knees come down to earth and gentle or um, soft reset. So micro bend the elbows, step your left foot back now, navel tucks in gently and then lift the left leg. Right arm out in front, palm faces the center line. Inhale, create some space. And exhale, right elbow to left knee as you round your back to the sky. Inhale, extend. And then exhale, tuck in, elbow to knee. Inhale, extend. Two more. Exhale, tuck in. And inhale, extend. This is it. Exhale, tuck in as you round your back to the sky. Inhale, extend. Right palm to earth. Left toes touch down. Open the right leg like a door or kickstand. Left heel to the floor and then come up high on your right fingertips so there's plenty of space. Okay. Left arm to the sky. And then root your right palm, bring your left arm overhead and create an arc. Your gaze is wherever it feels best for your neck and take an inhale here. Exhale, circle your arm back, full circle. 
hands to earth, knees to your mat. Soften through the elbow joints, okay? And then feel all four corners of your hands, maybe your finger pads as you tuck your toes. Gently press up and back, downward facing dog. And then when you arrive, please just, you know, you're in your own space. That's the beauty of virtual practice. Take a sweet big inhale and then some sound on the exhale. <sighs> You know, the more we can give ourselves permission for that, the better. So anytime you need in your home, in your practice, you can use that. Let's root through the hands together, really feeling like we're pushing down and into the earth, almost like we're making an impression. And then look between your ankles. And this is our one setup for down dogs. So you're going to look to see that your heels are disappeared behind your ankle joint. Put a micro, micro bend in your knees and root your palms. Wrap your elbows gently towards one another like you're pinching a big beach ball. And that should pull your traps down away from your ears. Let's bring the breath in. So into the back body one time. And then exhale, navel comes in gently on the exhale. Inhale, lift up high on the balls of the feet. Please bend your knees and step one foot and the next to the top. Inhale, hands to shin bones. And exhale, bend your knees and just sort of drape forward. Inhale, start to roll up your spine, knees bent until you start to roll the shoulders over the hips. Legs elongate, palms roll forward, standing easy, samastitihi, equal, equal pose. So let your chin be parallel to the earth. And by all means, if you want to close your eyes to feel your shape at any point, please do. And start to notice your feet. So brighten your toes. And if you can, settle into your back body. So bring your weight into your back side body. And then let's inhale, reach the arms up, palms press at the top. And exhale, bowing forward through the midline. Let the head drip down. Inhale, hands to shin bones. Exhale, bend your knees, root your palms to the earth and step back for your first plank. Okay, so everything is sort of, it's slowed down slightly so that we can let the pose work for us. We can arrive fully. We can notice the breath. We can press the earth in this shape kind of down and away from us and tack the pubic bone closer to the belly button or the navel. Good, and then shift forward Let's bring the knees down and lower halfway. Then grip your finger pads into the earth. Use this as a strength builder and press up a couple inches. Good, and then lower a couple inches. Press up a couple inches and lower a couple inches. You should feel a little resistance pressing up and pressing down. So don't be scared of it being a little bit intense. Okay, just like that, little pulses and then press all the way up, slink back for an active child's pose, hairline to the mat, breath in and breath out. Coming up through hands and knees, plank pose one last time here. Then we're gonna shift forward and lower all the way down, navel to the mat. Shoulders roll or wrap back and untuck the toes. Inhale here for a tiny cobra. And staying on the exhale, the navel comes in gently. So inhales create a little length and exhale draws the navel in ever so slightly and it should really warm the body. And then gently pressing back through hands and knees, downward facing dog, second time. And this time, looking between your ankles, gently pressing your hands. And then inhale, come up high on the balls of the feet, 
Bend your knees and step to the top. Hands on your shins, inhale here. And exhale to bow. I had to inhale all the way up, reach up. Hands to heart. Pausing here with the thumbs at the sternum. Eyes closed for a moment, all of us together. And now it's as if the practice truly begins, right? Our blood is pumping, our heart is beating. We're a little more grounded in the body. Let's bring the feet all the way together to touch the inner edges of the big toe mounds and the heels slightly separated. Let your palms roll down by your sides, looking forward, and then inhale, reach up, palms press overhead. Exhale, bowing forward through your midline. Inhale, pick up the heart, halfway lift. And exhale, bend your knees, root your palms, step back to plank. Finding this one more time in a hold and then we'll use it as vinyasa. So here, feet are hip distance. You can almost imagine having a block between your thigh bones and scooping your pubic bone slightly closer to the navel to start to do the core work in an almost invisible way. So we're gonna work here, grip your finger pads a little bit, shift forward and lower halfway. Always you could bring your knees down, inhale upward facing dog. Pressing the top of the feet firm to earth and slingshotting the heart forward. Exhale back, downward facing dog. With your breath for three. Beginning to let the breath now comb through your tissues for two. And one. Okay, bring the feet just slightly closer together. Inhale to lift the right leg parallel to the earth. Keep a micro bend in your left leg and root your hands equally. Turn your right toes towards the right side of your mat. Then put a bend in the knee, opening the knee towards the sky, almost like your, your paintbrush, right? It's like reaching up and back toward the back side of your space. And then high on the ball of the left foot, Tack your right knee towards your right upper arm bone. Inhale up and back. Right knee, left upper arm bone. Inhale up and back. Good, high in the ball of that left foot. Tack your right knee in towards your heart and step the foot between the hands. Take your time in getting there. When you do, high on the finger pads, either side of the right foot. Let the back knee come down to almost touch the earth and then re-extend the leg firm behind you. Inhale, reach the arms up, crescent lunge. In this one, the palms face one another. The back leg is gently charged from the heel. And then rather than just pushing into a sort of back bend, see if you can't breathe towards your kidneys or your back body. Open it up, warrior B, as you spin the back heel down and stretch the arms out to your sides. Let your pelvis come parallel to the earth. Okay. And then look to your front fingers. Inhale here. Exhale, shift forward, flip your front palm and inhale up and back, exalted warrior. Right elbow, right thigh bone. This can be your shape. You can always creep your back foot up or right fingers to the inside of the right ankle. Left arm sweeps down and beyond the head. Extended side angle looking to your left palm. And as you use your drishti, your gaze and land it in your palm, you're kind of creating a circuit. You're keeping your focus within your body. So let's breathe the tissues. 
And then begin to notice what your body is calling for. Oftentimes it's just a softer breath or a deeper breath or an adjustment. And then circle the top arm back, coming back to warrior B, straighten the front leg and land your hands on your waistline and pivot your right toes in so that your feet face the side of the mat you're on. Then turn your heels in, toes out. Good. Inhale your arms up parallel to one another. And then exhale, come down cactus arms in your goddess squat. <laughs> Inhale, reach up, straightening the legs, and exhale, kind of pulling down the whole body, cactus arms, goddess shape. Again, inhale, reach up, and exhale, come down. Two more, inhale, reach up. Really using your breath, exhale, come down. Last time, inhale up. Exhale down. Good, come all the way up. Hands to your waistline. Good, pivot those left toes in part way, right toes to the front of your mat. Bend into that right knee and place the hands to either side of the foot, stepping back, right to down dog. Good, and looking between your ankles. And then noticing the symmetry in your body, feeling the hips pull back and up equally. All right. And now step your feet back just a few inches. <laughs> Give yourself more space. And on an inhale, I want you to inhale and roll up your spine towards plank, like a little wave. And then exhale, lower halfway or all the way. Inhale, upward facing or cobra, if that's better for your body. And then exhale, down dog. Feet hip distance. Hands and especially the outer edges rooted, looking gently between the ankle bones. Now inhale, lift your left leg. Pause, feel your hands press equally to your mat. And then pivot your left toes towards the side of your mat to open the hip. Then place the bend in the knee. Reach your left knee up and back like a paintbrush stroke. <laughs> Press your hands high on the ball of your right foot. Tack your left knee towards your left tricep as you shift towards this plank. And then inhale the leg up and back. Left knee to right tricep. Inhale up and back. Good, high on the ball of the right foot, tack the left knee into the heart. Step the foot between the thumbs. However you need to get there, when you arrive, light on your finger pads, either hand. Drop the back knee almost to the earth, but not quite. <laughs> and then charge up the back leg, so it's your support. On an inhale, reach the arms up, crescent lunge. Palms face one another, like you're holding a beach ball <laughs> or something soft. And then start to feel that um, kind of immeasurable support <laughs> of the back leg. So it's really your stronghold. And then gently slingshot your heart up and forward in space. And then one more here, take a big breath to your back body. And exhale, warrior B. So you allow yourself a moment to arrive. You resettle that back foot perpendicular to the front. Arms then come out to the sides and float. <laughs> Look to your front fingers and take a nice inhale to your side body. Exhale, shift forward, flip your palm. Inhale up and back, exalted warrior. And exhale, elbow to thigh bone. Creep your back foot up an inch or two if you need to for stability. You never want to feel like you're coming apart. 
And this can be your shape or left fingers to the inside of the left ankle. Right arm sweeps down and beyond the head, looking to your palm, and then beginning to comb through your tissues via breath. And just making presence more important than perfection. Noticing what you truly notice, where the sensation is, how it's different, side to side. Circle the right arm back, coming all the way up where your B. Straighten the front leg, hands to your waistline. Turn your left toes in, okay? And so all toes face the opposite side of your mat. I'm gonna face you, but you're where you are. Then again, turn your heels in, turn your toes out. This time I want you to place your hands on your upper thighs and then just sort of slide your hands down your thighs as you come into a wide knee squat. So a goddess squat, except for our arms are not up. So we're kind of like, a little bit relaxed, right? <laughs> There's a little bit of support this time. And what you're looking for is knees in the same direction as your toes. So if your knees are really piling into the center, you wanna get your heels a little closer and try again. Yeah. Okay, from here, inhale. Exhale, gently drop your left shoulder. Right shoulder lift. Inhale, center. Exhale, drop your right shoulder. Inhale, center. One more, drop your left shoulder. Right shoulder lifts. Inhale, center. And drop your right shoulder. Left shoulder lifts. Inhale, center. This is kind of the heat here. <laughs> okay, so I want you to press into your feet, extend your legs. So you're coming up and giving your legs a break. Inhale the arms up and overhead. Exhale, come down, cactus arms, goddess posture. Good, inhale, come up. Exhale, come down, cactus arms. Inhale, come up. Exhale, come down and pause. Okay, meet yourself by kind of leaning into your back body and just noticing if it's challenging, that's perfectly fine. <laughs> Presence over perfection. And then if you dare, <laughs> lift your right heel off the ground, coming up high onto the ball of the foot. Yes, and then drop that heel. And then lift your left heel, coming up high onto the ball of the foot. And then drop that heel. And then lift your right heel. <laughs> Good. And drop that heel. And lift your left heel. Good, and drop that heel. Inhale, press everything long, reach up. And exhale, hands to your hips. Turn your toes in. Probably a tiny bit of relief there. And then as you do, you also turn your heels out slightly, preparing for Prasarita Parottanasana. Tiny bend in the knees. And then I wanna encourage you to fold from your hip crease and bring your finger pads under your shoulders. Um, for some of you at home, this might already be challenging for the hamstrings. And if that's true, you actually wanna widen your legs. Um, it's a little counterintuitive, but the wider you go, the deeper the fold can become without strain. So a little micro bend. And then either, if this is already intense, <laughs> stay and gently bow. If you have more availability in the body, then hands between the feet, fingers facing the same direction as your toes. Wrap your elbows in and bring the crown of your head to the earth. Let's breathe together for one. Always a five count for two. Letting your shoulders come away from your ears for three. for four, and five. Inhale, lift your heart. 
Good, hands right under the shoulders. Turn your right toes forward and, or your left toes, <laughs> and then walk your hands to the front. Good, and then pause a moment, root your palms fully and step to down dog. And align your feet, it's okay to um, change where you end up. You know, we can always, always adjust. So really nice here to bend into one knee and then the next. Keeping your hands, your arms, your back long and rooted. And then inhale high onto the balls of the feet. Bend your knees. Step or float lightly to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale to bow gently. Inhale, come all the way up, reach your arms. Samastitihi, easy stand. Looking forward in space, consciously relax your pelvis. We tend to like store our tension there and bring it out in the next shape. So see if you can soften that space now. The micro bend in the knees is gonna help you receive from earth. Okay, and then from this shape, hands to your waistline, take your right foot back about a foot behind you so that both heels can be on the earth and all toes face the front of your mat. Your hip bones are shining forward like headlights. So if one is lower than the other, you wanna kind of pull up to align. And then begin to put your weight in your left foot, high on the ball of the right foot. Tack your navel in slightly and look as if over the edge of your mat, like you're looking over the edge of a cliff. And if you do that, your core will brighten. <laughs> and then lift your back leg, arms to the side, start to descend for warrior C, our balancing standing posture this morning. Letting your breath fill your sides on the inhale and letting the exhale gently draw the navel in. Not afraid to lose our balance, but stay present. Good, slowly standing, right foot next to the left. Pause in samastitihi and notice the difference left to right side. Soften the pelvis. Hands to your waistline, left foot back. We're keeping it simple, but that allows us to stay present and engaged in the muscles. So as all 10 toes face forward and the hips level, then we begin to put the energy in the right foot. And the tendency is urgency. <laughs> so see if you can take the urgency out, lift high on the ball of that back foot. Imagine you're looking over your cliff's edge over the top of your mat, and then start to descend the body, arms by your side. And maybe this time there's a little bit of this kind of free falling or skydiving energy <laughs> where there's, there could be joy in a challenging shape. You know, we tend to associate effort or challenge with pain. And it just, it doesn't always have to be that way. So we're challenging the mind and the shape as well. We're letting the shape work for us. And then slow-mo, left foot to the right. Easy stand. Palms forward, soften the pelvis. <laughs> Good feeling in place of fidgeting. Let's inhale, sweep the arms up, reach up gently. And exhale, bend the knees and sort of dive forward, <laughs> you know, like you're diving into water. And as the fingers touch the earth, then straighten your legs. Begin to peel the heart forward into a little half lift, but we're not gonna rush. And I want you to open your feet hip distance. Put your weight into the front of your feet with a micro, micro bend in your knees. And then option here to either 
just hold opposite elbows and let the head dangle or to wrap your hands to the back of your calf or Achilles and wrap your elbows behind your knees for a gentle fold. So we're pairing these balance challenges that are slightly sympathetic nervous system shapes with these rest and digest shapes. So see if you can just tap into the difference. And then inhale, lift the heart part way, hands to shin bones. Nice bend in the knees, root your palms and step back. Finding your plank, shift forward an inch or two, lower down halfway. Untuck the toes and inhale, upward facing. Exhale back, downward facing with your breath for three, for two, and one. High on the balls of the feet, okay? And then root those heels back to earth. Feel the energy move toward the back of your mat. Please inhale the right leg to lift. Turn the toes to the side of your mat. Put a bend in your knee towards the sky. Root your hands, reach the knee up and back, and then right knee toward the heart as you step the foot through. Our final lunging practice of today, you're gonna to bring the back knee down to the earth. Now you wanna look for your right knee setting on top of the right heel. And I'm gonna just come to more of a seat so you can see this. And I wanna press my energy down and forward into that right foot. Then I'm gonna take my navel in slightly and wrap the left elbow to the outside of my right knee. Placing the left palm to the sky, land the right palm in the left for a prayer position. Now this might be plenty and or you might feel it's too deep and you can bring your left hand back to earth and just place your right hand on your thigh to twist. That's also an option. But the work is to actually feel your twist and breathe the shape, breathe through the tissues. There's also an option for some of you to lift that back leg and take this into a lifted twist. And you'll notice that on a Sunday morning, early in the morning, right? This is, it's a big deal for the body to twist in this way. So just be with your sensation, be with the challenge. See if you can take a joy and a breath, right? Or a tiny pocket of the body as you twist. And then release your finger pads. Walk your hands toward the left as you turn your toes towards the side of your mat. Turn your left toes out at a 45 and then lift your right toes as you sink down for skandhasana or a low side squat. And for so many of us, we actually need our hands as support. So I don't want you to look for perfection Look for presence. And I know for me and for a lot of yogis, it's easy to go into the deepest version of the pose, even though that's not the best thing for the body. Okay. So we're listening and then we're just gonna shift to the opposite side. So the right toes are out at a 45, the left toes lift and you kind of slink down into that skandhasana on the opposite side. Use your hands as support. Okay, don't feel like you have to drop in. Instead, see what it's like to turn your left knee to the sky just a quarter of an inch more. And then change, this is our last migration. Left toes turn out, right toes turn up. Skandasana. And then we're gonna use the hands, spider crawl back to the front of our mat. Good, root your palms. And it is kind of like you have to plug down and pull back with your right foot to find that down dog, right? So you're using all of yourself to get there. <laughs> okay. And then when you find down dog, feel the symmetry, feel the difference between left and right. And you might be able to feel your channels open on one side of the body. Mm -hmm. And then inhale, lift your left leg parallel to the mat. 
press your hands. Micro pend your right knee so you're not locking the energy of the earth out. Spin your left toes open. Bend the knee to the sky. Reach it up and back like a paintbrush. And then left knee to the heart as you step that foot through. Take your time. Presence with your felt sense of the shape as you drop your back knee. And then again, we're gonna just come up, root the left heel under the left knee and take your time coming into this. You know, sometimes it's hard to like soften in between the shapes, but this is not an asana, we're just preparing. So we can soften, we can breathe. And then as you press your left foot down, tack your navel in for a twist, right elbow to the outside of left knee, palm up. Left palm and the right palm. And then you gently press your hands together. Okay. And if this is too deep, by all means, right hand to floor, left hand to thigh. Better to be with breath than too deep shape. Right. And then for some of you, there is that option of lifting the back leg, but notice what happens to you when you do that, if you do that. Right. You're looking for challenge that, that could be touched by joy. <laughs> not challenge that makes us not breathe or, or retract from ourselves. So making your authentic experience the most important part of your shape. Beautiful. And then we're going to release this side, fingertips to the earth. Creep your hands to the right, turn your right toes out, turn your left toes up, Skandasana. And rather than dumping down into that right side, perk up a little bit, use your hands and focus on your left toes to sky. And then change, migrate to the opposite side. Again, avoid dumping into the left hip, but instead use your hands, spin your right toes up, right in your toes. <laughs> and then change, last move, last migration. Keep your right foot nice and bright and active. And then let's migrate to the front. Fingertips either side of that left foot. Let's root the palms fully, pull the left foot back to meet the right. And then high on the balls of the feet. Gently drop your knees to earth. Knees together, feet together. Sit back on your heels, hands on your thigh bones. Close your eyes for a moment. Coming back to symmetry in the body. Notice what is bubbling up inside, where the sensations are grouping. And can you give yourself 30 seconds to receive the gifts of perception, sensation? Beautiful, gently lean forward, hands on the earth, tuck all 10 toes, and then begin to sit back towards your heels. I want you to manually tuck your tiny pinky toes or any maverick toes that are trying to <laughs> escape. And once you have your toes tucked, you're gonna try and keep your inner thighs gently hugging toward one another. And I know that um, for me, after these sorts of sequences, you can actually feel like a vibration at the very inner thighs, the central nervous system. That's wonderful. That's a nervous system release. So just settling back on your heels, trying to be clever <laughs> um, in keeping the weight off your heels is counter to the purpose of the shape. So 
Give yourself permission to drop your weight, to slouch a little, to not have to sit up perfectly. And just for a few breaths with me, you know, I don't know your body yet, so this could be very intense for you. <laughs> and it could also be quiet for you. And whatever is there, see if you can take two rounds of gentle ujjayi, breath in and out through the nose. One more here. Good, coming off the tiptoes, untuck, settle back on your heels. Fingers to either side of your mid thigh bones. Now let's counter that, soften that. You're gonna lift your knees maybe three to five inches off the ground opening the top of your feet. If you're feeling really saucy, you can kind of roll up onto the top of your feet like a dancer, okay? And then softly coming forward, hands under shoulders, knees under hips. Step your left hand forward in space. It should feel a little awkward. Navel comes in. Thread your right arm underneath you so that you come down on your outer right shoulder and your side, side face, side head. <laughs> it's really not your cheek, you know? So left hand in front of your face and keep your right hip tracking back. Okay, kind of a final upper thoracic twist here, really trying to unwind the central channel. Extend your left leg long if you'd like and take two rounds of breath. Place your left knee down, press into your left hand and unthread your right arm. Take it easy. These are actually quite deep shapes of her breathing. <laughs> Sometimes we can take and without breathing and we don't get the same impact. So right hand forward, like you're taking a step, navel comes in a little, left arm scoops under you and keeping that left shoulder away from the ear, right hand comes gently in front of the eye line. Keep your hips traveling back in space. And I like to push the back side of my left hand down to open the back body. Right leg can extend Two rounds of breath into your shape. Presence over perfection. Bring your right knee down, press your right hand to unthread your left arm and hands under shoulders. You're gonna walk your shin bones, knees forward, sit back on your heels and come over to the right side of you, legs out in front. Hips then in the middle of your mat and knees to the sky. I'd like you to bring your tiptoes to the earth and hold underneath your knees. Now let your back kind of round, let yourself go soft. And like a child, <laughs> You're gonna rock up and down your spine three times like the beginning. And just notice if there's a little more freedom, if it helps open your lungs. Beautiful. And on your third, rock up. Extend your legs long on your mat. Bring your toes to curl back towards your own face. And then work yourself to the left side of your mat and bring your right foot in to your inner right groin for Janu Shursasana. And you do wanna look for your right knee wider than a 90 degree, which is a little counterintuitive if you've been practicing this differently. So we're looking for that nice opening so that as we turn towards the left leg, and you reach your hands, I like under the calf muscle rather than the foot. You can kind of plug them under the calf. 
turning your right shoulder down, you can feel this in the low right back in the quadratus. So let's take a nice inhale. And then exhale, gentle bow, navel in with your breath, listening to your body, feeling your sensations for three. For two. Shoulders away from the ears. For one. Look to your toes. Then hands to floor, press yourself up. Okay, change. Right leg to right edge of mat. Left heel comes into inner left groin. Left knee is at more than a 90 degree angle from the right leg. And then you turn your body towards the right leg. Clasp your hands underneath your low calf muscle if possible. And then turn your left shoulder down. Inhale here. And exhale, navel draws in gently as you bow with your breath and with your pockets of sensation. Breathing your shape for three. Letting it work on you and for you for two. And one, look to your own toes. Use your hands, press up, and change. Legs come forward in space. Let's take knees to the sky, hips to mid mat. And then arms out in front like you're gonna clasp somebody's hands, you know, like you're playing that trust game where you're holding someone's hands. <laughs> and then you're gonna slowly lay yourself down on your mat. Just migrate. Not a bunch of core work, just, just enough to feel your descent. You're gonna let your feet open now to the corners of your mat. And really important to let your feet kind of sway side to side for a minute. And that's gonna help release the low back. Shoulders away from your ears and your arms are gonna peel open out to the sides. Because we did a lot of great twisting today, I think the wider you go, the better. <laughs> okay, almost like a starfish, Shavasana. And when you arrive, when you feel like, whew, there's relief, there's the earth. Take some sweet breath in and a sigh on an exhale. <sighs> and if it felt good, you can do it again and I want you to follow the sensation of the sigh in your body. If you are someone who has low back pain or chronic back pain, then taking the feet onto the earth and the knees together can be your version of Shavasana. I always demonstrate that. We want to learn what is rest for us. Whatever your shape looks like, now is our time to practice non-attachment, <laughs> to settle the mind back to the earth. to be open to receive the gifts of practice. Of the day. So give yourself permission two minutes on this day to yield to the earth 
to be your authentic self, your original form. And to let that be enough. And sometimes we need to acknowledge that the best actions come from deep rest. Permission to relax. Please begin to deepen your breathing toward the heart. One more here, bringing the life into the body. By all means, permission to remain. If you would like to rise with me, then feet to the earth. Rolling to one side. And just staying with yourself as you rise to a seat. Coming to a simple seated position. Eyes can remain closed, attention inward. Hands could rest on the knees or hands to heart, thumbs to sternum. And checking back in with your energetic self. Noticing if you're settled. And thank you so much for your shared practice today. Namaste. Um, friends, I always come in here at the end and just see you more face to face. Thank you so much. And I want to pass it off to Natalia for a few minutes here. Um. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jenna. What an incredible way to start our Sunday. I hope everyone really enjoyed that. Um, but before we go, uh, just real quick, want to share that we do have some more Revel 11 events coming up. Uh, Tuesday, Summer of Self-Love continues with author Melanie Votor, who guide, will guide us on steps to writing a self-help book. And August 17th, social media expert Anna Learned, uh, Andrea Learned will join us and share how to take your social media channels to the next level. Um, we still have some spaces in our Revel, in yourself, in Rosalind, in November that are open. So all of that on revel11.com. And then thank you again to Jenna. And if you would like to show gratitude and make a donation, her Venmo is Jenna-McDonald-13. Um, so thank you again, Jenna. It was a beautiful way to start our Sunday. Um, I'll leave this up for a few more minutes. And everyone have a great Sunday. Thank you. Bye-bye.